how to do them both as part of Nundro and just as an offering, how to see them, how to use them as part of your practice. They're a very powerful kind of practice. More on that in a minute. Chuku kundu zong bo gong po yi Dorji sempa garab dorji dang Shere singe bardu shin lap di Dedam abzon tata tu sum chi Zog chen ju pe lama la sol wa Ergen Pema Junela Solwa De Norji Chang Chitilo Narodang Marpa Mila Gompo Tatapa Na Pupadang Palden Drupa Sok Kargulama Namla Solwa De O Chen Lama Nam La Sol Wa Deb Jo Chen Lama Nam La Sol Wa Deb Kagi Nuari Lama Nam La Sol Wa Deb Shakya Lama Nam La Sol Wa Nyandu dang yundrun lama nam la sol wa aha dev. Pal kandu zhong dang yer mei pa. Kan gerab dor ji jin trag pa. Jeti dang ni su me pa yi. Pal amanam che ten te. A mandala is a pattern. It is the symbolic representation of the pattern in which the universe occurs for Homo sapiens. Now, if you weren't a Homo sapien, if you were something else, it might look a good bit different. But I think all of you out there are Homo sapiens, mostly. So this is our pattern, our pattern of perception, our pattern of experience, rendered symbolically for the purpose of adding gewa to the universe. Gewa is open-hearted, open-minded, relaxed happiness. You all want that. Digpa, the opposite, is tight, constricted, scrunched, stress. You all don't want that. So, you want to add Gewa to the pot. This is a really powerful practice for doing so. The pot is the universe. You're increasing the Gewa locally to you and on out into the vastness of the universe by doing this practice. And the universe is big. Mostly the mandala talks about our local universe because that's what we are most interested in. But actually, if you can, recognize that our little cluster of continents, worlds, there are multiple world clusters all over the place. It's bigger than you think it is. 
what you are doing is generating of the whole path from guru devotion on up to enlightenment and the fruit unification of the dharmakaya and rupakaya the path and the fruit are not separate they're the same thing this is the pattern that we are talking about, the pattern that we are dancing with, that we are showing here. When you create this pattern mentally, when you imagine it, visualize it, the more details that you can visualize, the more gewa it's going to create. So many different kinds. So many different ways. And with this, just shuffling notes here, there are three levels, and it will work best if you can imagine the three levels all at the same time as the same thing, as you're doing the more complexities. This sounds like a lot, doesn't it? <clears throat> it's one of those things that gets easier with practice. In Nundro, Mandala was my favorite retreat. I really, really liked it. But then I'm a person with an active imagination. And it had all sorts of fun things in there for my active imagination to play with, which is probably why I liked it. Also, I'm into aesthetics and patterns. I like them. And I found this aesthetic pattern very beautiful. The Nirmanakaya level, the level of form. This is one billion billion universes, a hundred times ten million worlds filled with all the wealth of gods and human beings, like the seven great precious gems and other things. My bodies, my possessions, all of my gewa, all the sources of gewa, all together, I offer them in their entirety so that I may turn the wheel of the Dharma as a Nirmanakaya emanation liberating all beings. This is the Nirmanakaya mandala, the mandala of form. Easiest one to imagine. Most complex, form is very complex. Look at all the leaves <clears throat> on the trees, each one different. And all the bugs on all the leaves on the trees, each one different. And all the water droplets on all the bugs on all the leaves on all the trees, each one different. Form is complex. That's part of its beauty. Next is the Longku, the Sambhogakaya mandala. This is the essence of great bliss, the realm of great bliss, perfect with the five certainties and the mandala of the five Buddha, Buddha families. Let's see if I can state the five certainties off the top of my head. Certainty of perception or 
perceiving the difference between objects effectively as it is rather than as you fear it might be or hope it will be. Certainty of accomplishment within the pattern. Certainty of the union of Bodhisattva and Sunyata. Certainty of satisfaction and certainty of spaciousness. <clears throat> These are the realizations of the five Dhyani Buddhas as certainties, no doubts there. With this, all, this is all together clouds of offerings of every variety of sensual stimulant, emotional stimulant, feelings, vitality, the aliveness of feeling and perceiving. This is offered in its totality. With this offering, may we enjoy the perfection of the Sambhogakaya fields of great bliss. When you take all the perceptions and feelings and do not separate them from the perceiver and the feeler, in all their intensity, just as the rainbow-colored light when merged together is pure, clear, transparent light. And yet when it refracts through raindrops or a prism is perceived as rainbows. So all of this together is innate and true admantine great bliss. And yet it is perceived through the crystal of consciousness as the many perceptions, thoughts, feelings, emotions that are experienced by an experiencer. So don't separate the experience and the experiencer. It is not necessary to do so. And then the Dharmakaya mandala where all appearance and existence are completely pure from the very beginning, known as the youthful vase body, prior to, outside of, and after, and yet also within, the changing pattern, the pattern of change, which is the space-time continuum prior to the original oops. Between each and every original oops, which occurs again and again in each second, rather than long, long ago and far, far away, and after the completion of all the oopses. What is the oops? We don't have primal sin in Buddhism. We have original oops, the basic oops, the ongoing constant oops that you make in each moment of perception where you think the object of your perception at a Manakaya level, perceiving it, Sambhogakaya level, perceiver, Dharmakaya level, are separate things. Miss taking the experience as separate from the experiencer, influencing the experience, not realizing that the experiencer is also creating the experience while it creates the experiencer and there's no separation. Not noticing that. Oops. ornamented by the play of the Dharmata, 
unceasing compassion, the realm where all clinging to perception of the three kayas, and Tigles is naturally liberated. The realm where the display is fully complete. With this wisdom offering, may we enjoy the freedom of the Dharmakaya reality. With each movement you make in the offering of a mandala, you're offering it on all three levels. So in case of the ordinary mandala, you're offering stuff. Jewels, precious things, we'll go into the details later. All of this is part of the offering of the Nirmanakaya. In the Sambhogakaya family, you're offering in space the piles that represent the dance or the function of the five Buddha families, the five certainties. Ah, here's where I listed them. Discernment, function, open-heartedness. satisfaction and spaciousness. When you're building your mandala, the, when you put down the first, if you're doing four rings, you put down the first ring as the base. When you're doing three rings, you just use the base as the base. But the first ring is put after the Nirmanakaya mandala ring. You probably all want to see what I'm talking about here. Don't fall. Base. Now, this is an interesting set that I have because a lot of times you use this as the base. First ring, second ring, third ring. But if you're doing a four ring, you simply turn it upside down. I use this as the base. I do it this way because I make less of a mess. And I don't like having to sweep all my jewels up off the floor because I'm clumsy. So then, nothing's ever empty. Would be first, this would be the base. Nirmanakaya mandala occurs within it. This would be the first ring, second ring, and third ring. Either way, three rings holding the mandala, the three mandalas. The Sambhogakaya, the Nirmanakaya stuff, Sambhogakaya awakeness, Dharmakaya spacious openness. There is no separation when you do this between the offerer, the offering, and that to which it is offered. Know this even if you're not yet able to feel it. So in front of you is the lineage tree. This tonka, hmm, Nayando, can you just pick that up and aim it at this tonka for a moment so people can see it? There you go. So that's your field that you're offering to. You can put it back now. You are the offerer, and this handful of grain and jewels is the offering, and it's all the same. In the Sambhogakaya mandala, you visualize your skin as the ground. Your spinal cord with its central channel in front of it is Mount Meru. 
your four limbs as the four continents. That's why yogis wear bone bracelets and anklets, so that we always remember that we are the mandala. Your two eyes are the sun and the moon. This is Sambhogakaya. Essence of the five Buddha families. If you've done working with emotions, we work with the five Buddha families there a lot because we categorize the 51 um, cultural emotions and the, what was it, 84,000 homo sapien emotions other things might have different ones, I have no idea, into basically five categories, relate them to the Dhyani Buddhas, allow them to complete themselves into their natural state without suppressing or grasping, and so end up with the wisdoms of the five Dhyani Buddhas. It's a retreat, not something I'm going to teach over um, here because you can get into trouble with it and need to keep an eye on you, at least while we're doing it. The Dharmakaya Mandala, the naturally arising wisdom of the way things have always been, the fruit, the fruition, purified entirely of any clinging to anything. also offered, the complete realization of enlightenment offered. One's wealth is offered, one's own body is offered to the, as the realms to the Sambhogakaya level. In the Dharmakaya offering, the piles that you make are the four visions of spontaneous presence arranged upon the original ground of primordial purity. The four visions, recognition of reality, increasing of experience. Awareness reaching the totality of itself dissolution of complexity into simplicity. We're talking Togyal level here. That's offered, the realizations of Togyal are offered, the rainbow body itself, as it always has been. You all think maybe if I do these practices right, I can get me a rainbow body, huh? If you did, you couldn't keep it. Because what comes is going to go, haven't you noticed? Youth, beauty, wealth, it comes and it go again. Impermanence. So if you got rainbow body, you would later lose rainbow body. And that's not the point. You have rainbow body right now. You're just so distracted by your little petty stuff that you can't even notice it. So this is again and again, we give away all our little petty stuff, all our stuff, all our deep emotions, even our realizations and enlightenment. Give it away. And beyond that and beyond that, beyond itself, where there is no separation between path and fruition. That's where we're going with this practice. Yes, it's sometimes taught as a beginner's practice in Nundro. Oh, but it goes a lot farther than that.
when you do it, you never leave the base empty. And you always fill the rings completely, even if that means you've got to grab an extra handful and put it in there. Never leave it without offering. You also don't use empty hands. You always put a few grains in your hands. Now, I have fairly arthritic hands and can't really make a fist, so that becomes a problem. They fall out. So what I do is turn my rings around so that I'm holding jewels in my hands as well as the grains. See the jewels? And they won't fall out when the grains do. So the point I'm making here is use some common sense to make it work. Remember the key, it's never empty. I threw a couple of pretty shells and some grain in it just to have it sitting here. Later I will demonstrate for you the full 37 point mandala, how it's done. And how you do the short seven heap mandala, which you accumulate when you're doing Nundra. You do a lot of those. You only do the first 37 point mandala at the beginning of each session. Well, I'll talk to you privately in Nundro group. Um, I may adapt that for some people to do that in the first session of the day because some people are doing this and not making a lot of sessions in a day because they're working at the same time. We have a large group of people working their way through Nundra. They're all in different places, but we do meet every month and talk about it, usually with a translator when necessary. We've got a number of them who aren't English speaking. So Russian group out there, I believe you're online. If you want to join that, bring a translator, talk to your translator. He's a little bit hard for me to get in touch with sometimes, so you get in touch with him if you're going to be doing Nundro and want to join the Nundro group, which ha meets every month and straightens out gnarlies that have gotten stuck in your practice. I work with everybody. I do these groups, you see. For those who wish to work with me specifically in whatever practice they're doing, there's not just a Nundra group. There's Trekcha groups, Mahamudra group. There's a couple, a Tantra group. Because I think people need more than just seeing something on YouTube to get the essence. I think they need to actually be able to talk to the teacher about how their practice is going what's going on with them. But there's too many of you for me to do one at a time. Sorry, guys. So we have these little groups and there's anywhere from a dozen people to 50 people in a group. Usually the bigger groups end up with somewhere in the 40s. We rarely go over 50. And that gives a chance to talk together. So if you're going to undertake this practice as part of your Nundro, consider if you would like support in it, joining the Nundro group. It is not required. You get to do it by going onto my website and signing up for it. Then you get invitations once a month when that group's running. If you are not English speaking, I believe the setup has been started in Spanish and the Russian group is welcome to make a setup and work with Tasha on the website to make a sign up in Russian. That's up to you guys. I do not like to micromanage things. I'd rather practice. Live with it. So your base is never empty. You have something in your hands as well while you're doing it. Now, I wanna talk about physically. 
I drew this onto my arm the other day. There you go, you can see it on this arm. There is a acupuncture channel, runs through both Chinese and Western medicine. I don't know if you can see it, but it starts at the outer corner of your pinky nail, runs a little bit inward down right along the edge by the time it gets to here, it goes into the Mound of Dreams, and then it runs down just by these two tendons. There's a point right here, really important point right here. Can you see where I'm pushing? And it runs up here, all along here. So this is the heart channel. In Tibetan, it has to do with cities, clairvoyance, mushi. By stimulating it, that is more likely to occur. So you could pay an acupuncturist 85 bucks to stick a pin in it every week for you or every day, but that'll get a little expensive. And there's a lot of vasculature in here, so if you don't know exactly how to do that, it's not something you can be doing at home. Runs down both sides. Or, you can stimulate it as you clean the base. You rub it clockwise to remove obscurations counterclockwise to install body, speech, and mind of all Buddhas. And it activates the nerve of clairvoyance. Oh, come on, y'all want cities. You want to be able to fly like Superman? Come on, there's a little kid in all of us. No denying it. Okay, so this creates the cause when you do this. So don't not. It's important. So when you're going to begin doing the mandala, sprinkle some grains. Remember, never empty. Clockwise. More grains. Counterclockwise. Oh I like to say oh my home. It helps me remember. But it's not required if you don't want to. I think it's a good idea though. Your Stuff has already been prepared. Oh, bumper. Before you start this practice, yeah, my bump has seen better days. Too much travel in suitcases. You will have prepared your base by washing it. First with good water, make sure it's nicely clean. Then you will, and I'm just gonna do this symbolically for a moment. Oh, that's why this one needs work. I have a clog in my bumper. Sprinkling it and washing it with saffron water. Then, and I've done this already, I anointed it with sandalwood oil. Smell. That's how it's supposed to smell. You want it scented, all of the senses. Then there is rice with random bits of jewel in it. Here, you can see it. Jewels, beads, Pretties that were lying around, a lot of pearls got in, put in there. Pearls are very nice. Because um, I had a few strings of freshwater pearls that broke. Um, <clears throat> no, actually, I bought a few strings for this purpose. 
So we've got some nice little freshwater pearls. Uh, we've got a couple of real sapphires and emeralds in there down there somewhere. They're all mixed in and I'm not going to come upon them. But the best jewels, I've got turquoise. There's some lapis down in here somewhere. Cowrie shells, piece of nice amber. Whatever you got, then you take the grain and you wash it in a pot until the water runs clear. Keep adding water, pouring it out, use a sieve to catch the rice until the water's clear. Then you spread it out on a tray to dry. I put it in the oven uh, without the, with just the pilot light overnight and it was fine, it dried. The other thing you can do before you dry it is mix some really, and you should do, is mix really strong saffron water and just pour and mix the saffron water into it so it has a very slight saffron scent. This is how you prepare in advance for your retreat gathering the things. You want a really big cloth to keep your rice in because otherwise it's going to be all over the floor. It's going to be all over the floor anyway. But less. Yes, my, my dear Kanjo has been helping me clean up rice and jewels. If where did we post these, the recitations? Those are posted on the website. I've also pinned the link in chat, and we're doing a similar thing over on YouTube. Okay, guys. So the recitations, which is a number of pages, is on the website. There's a link for you in chat. Whether you're on Facebook or um, YouTube, you should find a leak. A uh, leak. Facebook leaks. I prefer YouTube, but some people like Facebook and it does get the word out. It's hard to send an announcement on YouTube. And before you do anything, if you're, you're going to be holding the base, not empty. Something on it. Now, you guys are going to have to turn yourself around. In the West, in the West, We talk about the Western world and the Eastern world. However it is, when we do maps, we put North at the top. In this instance, when you're doing an offering mandala, there's different ways you put it when you're uh, receiving an initiation mandala. But for this kind of offering mandala and in Nudro, you are in the West. The East is at the top with the south to your right and the north to your left. You gotta memorize this pattern and get it to be second nature or you're gonna get lost while making the heaps. So feel yourself in the west, Facing the east. I'm turning in this little room to be facing east. South. North. Set that pattern. It's the first change of your belief system, your deeply ingrained belief system that you're going to make here. You're going to make a lot of them. But that's the first one, and it's the damn easiest because you don't have trouble believing in a north, south, east, and west. 
So just changing which way you're facing instead of north is up and south is down. East is up and west is down. East is that way, west is this way. South, north. Feel it. And then you're going to begin reciting. Om Madra Bhumi Ahong Wangjin Serji Saji Om Vajra Reki Ahong So, Om Vajra Bhumi Ahong I'm sorry, Bumi. which mandala offering text? Out of the list, we gave him a list on the link. Huh? It, I'm talking about the long 37.1. Okay. That's where we're starting. Gotcha. Well, actually, we started with, I'm not doing the grain mandala yet. We're talking about how it's done, what the meanings of things are. <laughs> then we'll go to the actual hand movements. But when you find the text, there's three texts. The first one is a set of Nirmanakaya Sambhogakaya Dharmakaya, that set offering, just said as like a four or five line prayer. Very brief. And you do this if you're in Nundro. You do this before you do to remind you of the levels before you do the 37 point mandala. Now we're talking, we already talked about the pattern of that. Now we're talking about the pattern of the 37 point mandala. <clears throat> so the first words, Om Benza Bumi Ahong, remember Om Ahong body, speech, and mind of all Buddhas. Bhumi is land, soil. It's also the name of Gaya in Sanskrit. Gaya, Mother Nature. Om Admantin, Mother Nature, the land, the soil, the earth, the planet. Ah, Hong. Feel that? Chi chakri kor yogi kor sung. Oops, I started at the wrong one. Shi yong su dak pa wan jin serji sa ji. So now we're talking about the golden ground which symbolizes the admantine body, speech, and mind of all Buddhas symbolized itself by the earth we live on. Form, intent, or pattern, or vitality, and spaciousness. Om Vajra Reki Ahong. Reki is line, Pattern, it's interesting, it's a Sanskrit term for the grammatical pattern that makes a language make sense, and it's different in every language. So it really refers to the pattern that sets it up as usable or understandable. Chichagri, chichagri usu. This is the iron fence around the outside, which symbolizes that. The circular iron fence. Rigyalpo Rirab, the mountain in the middle. Its eastern side, remember east is there, is white. White sapphire, radiant like the rising sun. 
The western side is ruby red, very radiant. That's why we have a whiter light in the sun, sunrise and a redder light in the sunset because it's moving. The sun is going around the mountain from one to the other. The south. Radiant blue like lapis lazuli, like the sky at midday at very high altitude. And the northern sign is, side is golden, also very bright. This is so all the way up, all four levels, these colors. The main point in regard to the mandala is that the higher quality of our visualization, the more gewa we're going to create by doing it. According to our present level of mind, that's what determines what we see. Your group karma, cultural group karma, does not allow you to see the edge of the ocean. And you lack the flexibility to shift and find that, to experience a flat earth, which is hella fun if you can do it, just for the purpose of developing cultural flexibility, not being so very caught into one belief system set, culturally imposed, or another belief system set. Seeing the world as round does not really bother you much. You got other things in your cultural matrix that do, that hinder you. Belief systems drummed in by your culture. Work ethic? Puritan sensibility, anyone? Over drinking. Vodka is good. You always drink vodka when you get together. That's what fun is. Cultural. Pessimism. Some cultures are pessimistic. You figure your own culture. Not why it got like that and what historical stimulus made it like that, whether it was the long, dark, cold winters in Scandinavia which do lead to a lot of alcohol because there's nothing much else to do, or whether it's the vibrant colors of tropical plants. If you can shake loose the round earth for the duration of the retreat and live and perceive in a flat earth mandala, you will develop the flexibility to shake off the crap that does bother you. So, in the east, and we always start up at the top in the east, at, at that end, because we're offering, so that's first. In the east, Shar Lupagpo, the eastern continent, remember, very much of a white color. People there are mostly traders. They have great orchards. And they trade among themselves, but it's a really different society system than here. Here, when we trade, we're into profit. Two people bargain, each one trying to get the better of the other. That's not how they see it there. They're into something, they have a word that means something similar to harmony. When they trade, they try to make the most possible benefit to the two people or three people or however many doing the trade mutually. To take profit where another took loss, boy, would you lose face there. That's just not done. Like eating on the street among the English upper class. Just not done.
In the south is us, our continent, Zambuling, with a blue sky and the wishing jewel. In the west, with a red sky, is Nubalang Cho. Ah, they are herdspeople and nomads. They don't build houses. They have these big wagons, big wheels. Wheel, they're, they're, they're very tall people, but the wheels are even taller than the people. And the wagons go through these seas of grass, following the herds of something rather like a buffalo or a bullock. They're not that hairy, though. Less hairy than a buffalo they are. More like a bullock. And they follow the herds and they wander. At, it's a very interesting culture. Peaceful. They have beautiful handicraft. Gorgeous, like handwork, like embroidery and wood carving. And they sing and dance a lot. So it's a fun place to visit. That's the West. In the North, Draming Yen, square continent, gold sky, yellow sky. They're super high tech. That's where you've got all the technology and the robotics, much more than we've got here. They have no work. They don't work. They have robotics. They have machines that do the work, that sow the crops, that harvest the crops. It's very nice. None of these continents other than Lo Zambuling are uncomfortable enough to be looking for out. They're so nice. So peaceful among the traders in the East. Everyone trying to do the best by everybody else in harmonious trade. Pretty much nobody's hungry. There's no poverty. You move around, you visit different people, you trade stuff from your orchards with their orchards and like that. It's really a lovely life. Why would you try to find an alternative like out? You don't suffer until you die. And very long lived, extremely long lived. Although the North probably has the longest life with all their tech. In the land, in the West, in the land of herds folks, nomads. It's also an extremely pleasant life. So why would you look beyond? It's only here in Zambuling that life is so damn messy and uncomfortable that we are inspired to look for an alternative. Then we have, beside these continents, we have Ludang Lupa, Nayab Dang, Nayab Jan. We have all the, the little four islands. They're the same shape and peopled by the same people. So that's the next thing in the mandala that you put the heaps for. Then we have the precious mountains. That's where we are in the east, uh, sorry, in the west. Now I'm getting turned around again because I turned my piece of paper around again. Where we are in the south, we have the precious mountains. In the east, where the traders are, think of them as traders, their culture, I'm into cultures. They have forests, wish-granting trees, amazing fruit from the trees. They're incredible at, uh, with that. The cow that gives unceasing milk is the magic of the West. And crops that are not harvested or planted is the magic of the North with all their tech. Above in space... 
There is the precious wheel, which symbolizes Dharma activity, so it is generally seen as above the South. But when you describe it, it's a golden wheel made from water, transparent gold. It has a thousand spokes, each one 500 paxe long. Oh, think of a paxe as about a kilometer. It's big. It's high in the sky. It flies. It's bright like a second sun and can carry four multitudes of people. This is starting to sound like a space station to you. It can go through space to the four continents and to the realms of the devas very quickly. You can visualize numberless ones of these filling the universe. It's the symbol when you're into the next level of the Dharma and the function of the Dharma. But on this level, it's a thing. Are you beginning to see the depth of this? Norbu Rinpoche, the wish-granting jewel, is also here in the South. It shines and eliminates all problems. The symbol of Ratna Sambhava. Now we get into what is called the accoutrements of a king what a king needs to make his function, his society go. But it's also the qualities a person needs to function as a person. So these are qualities personified. For instance, Tsunmo Rinpoche, princess, and she's seen in the West, but beautiful. Beautiful smelling, beautiful looking, beautiful sounding. The essence of charisma, of attraction. She relieves beings of their suffering just by seeing them and brings them forth into bliss just by touching them. She has abandoned the five mistakes of a sentient being, which are fear, anger, competitiveness, lust, dissatisfaction, and constriction. See how these are the opposites of the five qualities? To abandon the five mistakes arises as the five qualities. Each of these qualities and mistakes is relating to part of the mandala of Dhyani Buddhas, for those are the qualities of vitality of humans, of us, people, sentient beings. And it is also the Sambhogakaya level of the mandala. Lompo Rinpoche, precious minister. He's in the north, of course, tech. He's competent, he gets everything done, accomplishes whatever needs to be accomplished. Like, renew your driver's license, register the car, pay the bill. You know, there's a lot of crap in life that got to be done. Nobody's favorite. He does it for you. He is your ability to do it smoothly without a problem arising. Longpo Rinpoche, precious elephant in the southeast. The precious elephant is power the power to accomplish, the necessary energy to accomplish whatever is needed. Tacha Grimpuche, the precious horse, the four limbs of magical emanation of the Buddhas, the ability to go wherever one wishes to go, to go the distance, perseverance. 
This is also the four magical limbs of emanation. The ability to go with speed, the ability to pass through solids, the ability to multiply, and the ability to fly. These are the mystical illusions called zuntrul, symbolized by the horse. Nothing can stop it. It can pass through any sol solid thing. Makpon Rinpoche, the precious general, the essence of being undefeated. You can fall down, but you're not defeated. You get back up. The essence of never giving up. Do you see how these qualities? Terchimboi bumpa, the next, the wish granting vase. Beyond time and space, where all is accomplished, is of the nature of the wish granting vase. So as you will say these things and put the heaps of grain, this is what you visualize. So that's all in the first ring. Next comes the next ring and here you have the goddesses, the offering goddesses. Goddess of Rosary, Initiations, Wongs. Trengwama, Luma, Goddess of Scent, Garma, Goddess of Dance, Metogma, Goddess of Flowers, Dupoma, Goddess Offering Incense, Nangselma, Light Offering Goddess. So each of these goddesses you perceive clearly as incredibly beautiful. The light offering goddess has her hand over her head. She's holding a lamp, big lamp on her shoulder that sign is as bright as the sun. Her other hand is at her heart. Each one of them, the dancing one is dancing and moving in beauty. The garland one is holding a mala at her heart, ready to bestow initiation upon you. So you visualize these all really clearly. And then the third level. Nima Dawa, the sun and the moon. The sun's in the south, moon's in the north. I think I just pointed the wrong way. Sun's in the south, moon's in the north. I get turned around in this one too. And realize as you're offering the sun and the moon that that's not all. This is just our little world. There are countless worlds throughout the universe with their own suns and moons and their own configurations. Add all of it. The final level is the sun and the moon Rinpoche duk chogla nampar gyalwe gyaltsen and the precious umbrella and the precious banner of victory. The precious umbrella is protection from hindrances and the banner of victory is enlightenment and these are at the top. Usula dang mi this is the perfect enjoyments of all the humans and devas. Put the finial on. Make sure you put three heaps in the center to represent body, speech, and mind of the Buddhas. Put the finial on. Remember, each atom of the mandala as you're doing it is a mandala. You are offering them infinitely, so even if you don't end up doing a hundred thousand of them, you still 
get the benefit. Anything I forgot to tell you. No, I told you all that. It's not cooperating. I'm a close frequently. Your cloth attempts to hold everything in one place. Worth a try. So if you're sitting cross-legged, this is in your lap and your legs make a sort of a boundary that contains it much better. So when you're going to do this, Say you're doing Nundro, and it's your first session of the day. So you've gone through the preliminary parts. You've done three prostrations. You've offered three or seven, long, or you've done three or seven long Vajrasattva purification. You've done the nine breaths. Now you're ready to do the mandala part, which is what you're working on. Om ah hong chueng mandral rig pegyam padi lama sanje choki kulabu rang lu mandral wang pogyam padi Lama long puts up pe kulabu. Rinchen mandral ser yigim padi. Lama tuk je trul pe kulabu. You can do this either with your hands pressed in prayer, imagining offerings, but it's also quite nice to do it this way. I'm about to entangle myself. Do you know how to do that? You take your mala, you loop it, so that your hands aren't empty. Then I can do it when I'm not thinking. Why, oh, I see what I'm doing. Wait a minute. There, cannot do it while I think about it. So your ring fingers stick up in the middle, that's Mount Meru. This is your pointer finger and your give them the finger finger. Your pointer finger goes and holds the give them the finger finger down. Your pinkies cross and your thumb holds them down. So you can go like this while you recite that. That's best, but if you can't do this, just hold your mala in your hand like this and imagine. Imagine.
better if you can do that. But I barely can now with the arthritis and not when I think about it. Oma Hong body, speech and mind of all Buddhas, the mandala of absolute space, ornamented by Rigpa awareness, the seer. I offer to the Guru, the Dharmakaya Buddha, the mandala of my own body, ornamented by the faculties, the sense organs. I offer to the Sambhogakaya Guru of perfect enjoyment, bliss. the precious mandala ornamented with gold and turquoise, I offer it to the compassionate Nirmanakaya Guru, Idam Ratna Mandala Kam Niriyatayami. See that? You do that first. It's short. No oh, good, we still have time. Then you pick up your base. I'm going to hold it like this, and I'm going to take some saffron water and sprinkle it. That's the symbol. I'm going to take this finger, the ring finger, sun, wealth, energy, and spread the saffron water all around. And I'm going to put a little handful here. Get this right. I'm going to put a little handful here and I'm going to clean it with that special nerve in my hand clockwise. I'm going to put a little handful again and I'm going to go with the same nerve counterclockwise. Om ah ah hum. Tipping it towards me. You tipped it away the first time. Now I'm going to put grain on it again and jewels. Om and Zabumi ah hum. She Ang Su Dak Ba Wang Chen Serji Sa Ji. And I can't do it slowly. Now my first ring is standing here. Right now is when the first ring goes on. That's the fence. Ri Lo Zambuling Nu Balam Cho Chang Draminian Lu Dong Lu Pog Two Heaps Nayab Dong Nayab Chin Yang Deng Long Chu Dong
Dramin yange, dramin yange dong. Rinpoche riwo. Pag samgi shing. Dojo ba mamo pe lokti. I got to here, but it's not quite full, so I'm just gonna make sure it's full and then put the next string on. Because I'm using four. This is where you put the second one of four. If I was using three, then you don't put it here. Horlo Rinpoche, Norbu Rinpoche, Sunmo Rinpoche, Lonpo Rinpoche, Langpo Rinpoche, Tachok Rinpoche, Mapon Rinpoche, Terchempo e Bumba. Next string. Now we've got goddesses. Gekpa ma, trang wa ma, lu ma, gar ma. Me tog ma. Duk po ma, duk po ma. Incense. Nang sal ma. Tri chab ma. Next string. Nima Dahawa Rimboche Do Chocolate Nam Par Galloway Gialtsen. Three more heaps. For the body, speech, and mind of all Buddhas, Lu Dang Mi Pal Jor Pun Sum Sok Pa Mat Seng Wa Me Pa Dihi Ni And there are different... Stay. There are different things you're going to say, depending on what you're doing. For instance, there's one for after receiving teachings. There's one when requesting teachings, when requesting empowerment. So I sent you all of those. But we're going to the one that goes for general and while accumulating. Got it? Sawa dang gyurpa chempe pal den lama dampa da yedam ki korgi lat sok sanje dang chang chub sempe tok dang che panam la yon tu pulu arji o tuk che do e dundu Shene so, shene jinge lab tu so. See that? That's your long mandala. I did it slow for you. When you have a ceremonial master in a monastery who does this all the time, that's their job. In fact, there's probably one on YouTube doing it. 
you'll see it done with great grace and beauty. I'm an old cave yogi. So Champa, when I did my retreat, I didn't have a fancy setup like this and it was 50 years ago. So I did it slowly to show you how it's done. If you're doing it in Nundro, it gets really fast and fluid because you do a lot of them. Usually one of these at the beginning of each session. I may give some of you dispensation to do it less often, but you gotta talk to me about that. Otherwise it's at the beginning of each session. Now, here's what you can do. Remember, you wanna keep visualizing that so you can set it here so it will remind you now, this is what you accumulate 100,000 of. So we're going to put it back. We're not going to sprinkle it again. I'm going to turn it over because it's much easier to work on it this way. And it's an object. I can decide that it's anything I want. So first I'm going to put a little rice. I'm gonna go clockwise three times. Tip it away from me. Then I'm gonna put a little rice. I'm gonna go clockwise, counterclockwise three times and tip it toward me. Oh ma as I unify with the body, speech, and mind of all Buddhas, which is what I'm offering to, which is who's doing the offering, and which is what is being offered, chukulanku truku. Now, seven heaps. Sajipurki Jukshing me tob tram re version in here also, which is quite nice. I just did by memory the short version. If you're doing it the long way, Saji Puki Juhuk Shing Me Tog Tram Re Rahab Do it the long way in your last one of the session. You can do it again and again, a hundred thousand. Just saji puki jukshing me tog tram 
Rira Blingji Nide Gyan Padi, Idam Guru Ratnam Mandala Kamiriya Tayami. That's how you do it. Stay. Are there questions? Um, one of the main questions, yes, I have my microphone, has to do with the offering set you're using. Uh, the people are talking about the fact that that kind of set is actually expensive, but you can make your own. And if you're going to make your own set, what sort of proportions should you use? Your base should be bigger than your eating bowl, your rice bowl, the, your kayong, the bowl you eat of. Tibetans all, they don't, they're nomads, up the ones I hang with. So they don't travel with like a full set of dinner plates, the good dinner plates, the funky kitchen dinner plates. You know, everybody has their own eating bowl down the front of their chuba. So if you go to, you always have it, that's where you keep it. It lives there. So if you go to someone's house, you pull it out and wet for supper, you pull it out and it gets food put in it. And you keep one about the size of your own appetite. This is bigger. Those are your proportions. This is not what I had when I was doing my retreat. I had a thing like this, which was of tin badly blackened and cleaned. It was ancient. I think it might have been a dog bowl at one point, but it was what I had. And it was bigger than my wooden eating bowl. And I took it from where I was using it to uh, mix flour and water to make bread. So I took my bread pan and made that. I didn't have this stuff, so I just visualized. I just did the heaps like this and visualized. That's fine, you don't need this fancy stuff. Somebody gave me this. It's supposed to be made of gold. It's heavy enough, but I think it's gold-plated. Brass, and yeah, they're expensive. Um, I don't know where this one came from. I think it was a gift from someone, and someday I'll pass it on. I found this at the second-hand shop. It's light. You don't want super heavy. It's pleasing. I like wood. It has to be something you think is be is beautiful. And wood with grain is something I think is beautiful. So just this will do. You don't need this stuff. Just this and a sack of rice. And maybe there's some beads around somewhere that you can use as jewels that you can think of as jewels, or just visualize. If you want to make the rings, you can make them out of cloth. I had once a set that I really liked. I wonder who I gave it to. Oh, well, it was long ago, where these were made of cardboard covered with cloth and beaded. And I think you can still get those in Majnutia. I think I know the guy who makes them, or he'd at least need to a special order if requested. Um, but we're not in Majnutia, so just visualize. Next question. Is there a substitute for the saffron water and sandalwood oil? No, and I don't even have all the things you're supposed to have. There's a special pill that you get from the Tantric College. I don't have one. Uh, but saffron is usually something you can get. Uh, if you don't have saffron and you're in the Bay Area, I'll give you a pinch of saffron. If you're somewhere else, please contact the rest of the Sangha. And if you can't buy saffron, see who will give you a piece of sa a little pinch of saffron. Mix it with hot water, leave it overnight with a lid, and you will have saffron water. If you don't have sandal oil, which is traditional, use any other kind of perfume that you like. Your hands are gonna smell of it after you've been doing this for an hour. I smell of sandalwood, I like sandalwood. Next question. Uh, one moment. 
It's like the way I can't hold the rice in my hands while I'm doing it and moving it. It just, it doesn't work for me. So I wear rings and turn them around. Then my hands have jewels in them. They're not empty. Uh, more practicalities. Is it left hand or right hand we should use? You generally hold the base in your left hand and do the stuff with your right hand. If you are left-handed, I don't know whether that shifts. Never heard of it shifting, but Tibetans aren't left-handed. It's not allowed. Remember like when the Christians used to beat it out of the kids? Next question. Is taking refuge with you first required to do this practice? No, taking refuge is required. It doesn't have to be by ceremony. If you, in your heart, take refuge in Chuku, Longku, Truku, Dharmakaya, Sambhogakaya, Nirmanakaya, known as the Three Jewels, in Gone Beyond the Beyond, known as Buddhahood, then that's fine. And you can do a ceremony with somebody when you get around to it. In your heart, you do it first. Okay. Next. What do you do with the rice when you are done with the offering? Well, I wrap it back up in cloth until I need it next time. It doesn't go anywhere, does it? No, not particularly. You use the same one over and over again. Or I leave it set up as a full mandala on the altar as part of the offerings when, I, when my altar is being nicely set up. Which happens sometimes. Next, I remember Rinpoche couldn't set up his altar for a month because the mouse had babies on it and he didn't want to make her homeless with small children. So he left the altar completely alone and the mice drank of the water bowls and ate of the rice until the babies were big enough to leave home and then he cleaned the altar. There's some things more important than a clean altar. Next door, next question. Similar to prostrations, should we complete three months of Vajrasattva before beginning mandala offerings? I recommend it at least to do each part until you get a strong sense of it having worked, which should take at least three months and maybe even six months if you're working and only managing one session a day. I'm not making everybody count. Some people I am telling to count, but not all of them. It's not the numbers. I did my first Nundro. I went to my teacher, very pleased with myself, finally finished my Nundro, been working on it for a year or so. And he looks me up and he looks me down so, with a really sad look on his face. It didn't work. Do it again. <laughs> so I did. I did the second one a lot better than I did the first. I understood why. You see, I'd been doing Nundro in order to have done Nundro the first time so I could get the good stuff rather than doing Nundro to be doing Nundro to see where it might go and what it might do. Very different. Next question. Um. Can, wait. Can we do mandala offerings to any deity or guru?
they are used in a variety of systems, such as the Native American and others, but they are done differently. When you are offering to something that symbolizes the three jewels, which is a euphemism for Dharmakaya, Sambhogakaya, Nirmanakaya, you would do it in this way. But if you were offering to the Thunderbird or to the Feathered Serpent, you would have to do it in the way it's done there rather than this way, I should think. So if I understood your question correctly, that's the answer. If um, I didn't, ask again in more detail. A related question is, does the visualization change based on which yidam we are offering to? Such as Chud Mandala offerings, which I think use body parts instead. There are other forms of mandala offerings and there are different mandalas for different yidams. But when you're offering a mandala, such as you want to receive a wong, regardless of which yidam the wong is for, you offer this one. Within the practice of that yidam, that yidam's own mandala is visualized and worked with differently. But that's not this, that's something other than this. There is a visualization, I did not give it to you um, because I thought that's gonna to be too much for all of them, which is a Chud type mandala offering. And I seriously considered passing on and decided against it at this time. So if you keep pestering me, maybe I'll show you later. But not today. Other questions? Can you recommend a tanka for those doing nunjo with the Kuntu Zangpo lineage tree? Go Google. Kuntu Zangpo lineage tree. Images, poke images down below. That you should get a wide range to choose from. Choose the one that you're attracted to. It may vary from person to person. It would have Kuntu Zong Po, Kuntu Zong Mo together in the middle. That's how you'll recognize that Google didn't give you something weird. Next. Does one know if a nundra works or not? Or does only the teacher know? Usually the matter is noticed between the two of them. Sometimes only the teacher knows, sometimes the student knows. I usually work with students while they're doing it. And usually together we notice when a certain part is at least done for now. Although you might be going back to it someday. If you get your undies caught on the fence you're climbing over or get some kind of glitch going in your practice later. Next question. Yeah, the questions we have left don't relate to Mandela. Okay, I want to stay on subject here. We'll be doing Q&A another time for all over the place questions. So if there are no more questions on Mandala itself. Well, there is one. Okay. Um, the links we sent today had several different types of Mandala offerings. Uh, which one person asked which text to use? Could you go over the I different types? Oh. There's a reason why they don't let me have delicate crystal. Nyando. Yes. This is what they're supposed to have. Okay, let me take a look. This would be the okay, this is the mandala offering from the tradition of Jatsun Ningpo. 
uh, and we've given the link to that. And this is the mandala offering you gave before you start, right? That's the one you start with. You start that, with. Those three pages go, are in right. order. So the Jackson Ningpo text followed by the 37-point mandala offering is the next text. And then the final one is the short mandala offering. So those three texts are... Are what you use if you're doing Nundra. Sometimes you just use one or the other in other life situations. But if you're doing Nundra, you begin your session with the uh, three-level mandala offering. Starts with the words Omahong, Chuying Mandra Rigpe Gyampadi. Then from there, you do the 37-point mandala offering. You do both of those once. You do this one while you're doing the funny thing with your hands, if you can. With your mala in your hands. Hurts. There we go. You do this while you're doing Oh Ma Hung Chuing Mandra Rig Peg Yambadi Lama Sanje Cho Ikuk Blabul, etc. Then you come to the 37 point. And you pick up your ground and you've got your rings. Oh Menzabumi Ahung. She young su dog pa one jin ser she sa she oh menza reki a hung and she chakri kil kori goro zu hung re gel po re rab shar lu pag po lo zambuling nu balang cho tang draw me in yen and on through until you finish it. And at the end you sing di ni all this. And you turn to the page that has to be said for general request and when accumulating. You have, I sent you all the different kinds. So that one. Yondu Bulwarjio. Luk Tang Drowe Don Du Shi Su So She Ni Jing Lab Tu So You say at the end after you do that one. Then you come to the short mandala offering that you're going to accumulate. What you're going to accumulate is Sa Ji Puki Juhug Shing Me Tog Tram Re ra bling ji ni de gyan pa di, which you may do a hundred thousand times or repeatedly until you're done. After you've done as many of those as you're going to do in a session, then you do Sanji Shing Du. Mik te pol wai dro kun nam dak shing la cho pa shu iram guru rat nam mandala kam niriya tayami. See the pattern? It may be a good idea can they find can you find those on the web page? The only other thing I might have put up there was a description of all the different things in the mandala to help you with visualization, but that's not in Tibetan. This is all in Tibetan and and English and phonetics so you can actually do it. Everything I give you will always be in those three. 
Anything else on mandalas? Uh, not on this ship. Okay. We're complete for today. Now it's up to you. You gotta practice it. Who just put up 20% off Garib Dorji? What? I... It just came through in chat on something. I... Don't be doing that, guys. This isn't a bizarre. Mewadi. for today. <laughs>